we're back with some more Buffy and Crate. In this this video, we're going to be taking a look at extending rounds as long as possible. This is something that I've, I've actually kind of covered relatively extensively, but I think this is also a, another really good example of why you should extend rounds out even if you don't necessarily want to or is not in your best interest. Uh, and you can see this a lot with uh, decks that use a lot of weather, like Aridin. Uh, in the past, like Spellatel, if you remember playing against them, you would always try and elongate the round as long as possible, so they had worse rounds two and three. Um, or in things like Queen's Guard, where you try to want to win rounds one and two. Or actually, that's not a bad example. Uh, I, I mean, rather, it's a bad example. Forget about that one. Uh, but anyway. So this is, we're going up against an Axeman with the new Herald. And Herald is a pretty powerful dude. He does a pretty incredible amount of damage once he gets played. And then every turn, he'll do one damage to um, to the lowest enemy. So it almost kind of works like a reverse Yennefer, except a little bit worse. But his deploy is really powerful. It's a very high tempo play. And in combination with an Axeman, it's pretty insane. It gets pretty insane pretty quick. So my entire goal here, what I'm thinking is that uh, because I'm 100% certain he's playing Axeman, both because of his leader and because obviously I have an Axeman in my hand. Uh, I just want to make I just want to use even if I lose the round, I want to try and use up all of our cards, both of our cards, if I can, even if it means I lose the round because. Axeman strongly rely on being able to linearly scale up their Axemen over time. So in turn, if they have like one or two turns, they either don't play Axemen at all because it's too weak or they have some other kind of play that's uh, just as weak because they're playing an Axemen dead. Uh, so the cards surrounding the Axemen aren't very good. So he starts off. I lock his Axemen just to shut it down uh, immediately. He plays a weather, not a big deal. I'm not that scared of weather, especially with uh, Morkvarg, and this is where Morkvarg really comes in handy. A lot of times I feel like he doesn't really get his value. Because, uh, yeah, he's a 9 strength silver that can carry over, but that's I don't find that that's all that helpful a lot of times. What's really helpful is that he can soak up damage and then come back. So, in essence, while he may just be like a 9, nine to 13 strength silver, or 9 to 14, rather, strength silver, uh, at a base level over the course of three rounds, you can get all that value in a single round, and that's where it really becomes useful. So he plays a second Axeman. He probably should have played on the melee row. I think maybe the person I was going up against was isn't entirely <laughs> uh, aware that the Axemen only work on the opposing row now, which is a really interesting change. I'm surprised they did that. While also keeping Axemen at uh, 4 strength, the 1-2 armor. I feel like that could use a slight buff, but maybe not. Maybe weather is just too powerful these days. Yeah, if you played the Axeman on the melee right, who he would have been getting like three hits a turn, which is really good. I go ahead and hit Mark Varg here so I can get his value out because hits against him don't really matter. And I also play out my uh, Octavist on the previous turn because I know he wants to make this round long as possible. So he's not going to pass like once it's uh, it's time where it's down to like one or something. Because he needs he he needs to win round one and then make round three as long as possible. That's generally the strategy they go for. Because if they lose round one, then they go into round two and they can be bled out so effectively. Because let's say they put down an Axeman and they put down their leader or something like that. Uh, that makes for a really easy pass for the opposing player because they don't have to worry about playing into that. And you'll see that here pretty soon. Th that's exactly what I do. Although it looks like my Octavist is going to die. I'm kind of thinking about taking out Octavist. It seems like the kind of card that's just win more to me in this particular instance. I think it's really effective or it's significantly more effective in a deck like Axeman, uh, especially like a round three scenario, because it not, you're not only extending out your turn by one, but also you're getting all the hits off on the enemies, which, are, which is going to be synergizing with your Axeman. But in this case, like Octavist, if it does hit, it's because it wasn't destroyed. If it wasn't destroyed, it probably means I don't like have control of the game or I don't know. It just seems like there's too much. Maybe that's not necessarily the case. It seems like there's just too much risk for a seven strength silver card as opposed to the payoff. Because all I'm getting is a uh, bit. 
basically all I'm doing is extending my turn by one. And how much is extending my turn by one even worth? Let's say in the most optimal situation, it's worth something like two, three, four, five, like five. And then Octopus comes to 12 strength silver. That's really difficult to play. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to be taking it out. Oh, and that's in addition to whatever it hits, but usually it doesn't hit all that much unless you use in the most prime condition when it hits uh, uh, like, you know, five to ten people. But even that's really rare. I got pretty lucky. I'm able to take out his action here. And even then, like, you can't ever play Octavist in like round one or two unless you're uh, unless you won round one and played around two. But even then, it's just like it's so easy to destroy or lock. I don't know. I think I'm going to get rid of it. But what do you even replace it with? It seems like the silver slots on Skellige right now aren't all that hot. Although I probably I, I may be able to put in a spy. I'm not sure. Actually, a spy would pretty much achieve the same thing the Octopus does, but in a lot less conditional state. I don't know. I'm getting off track here. But I guess there's not really anything to say about this game, this mat, uh, this round one. I'm basically just all I'm literally all I'm doing is uh, playing out everything that I have. Even if it's less optimal, like as you can tell, like I'm playing into three weathers. So it's like I'm taking I'm uh, I'm taking six damage a turn. But I don't really care about that. All all I'm worried about is push uh, getting rid of getting rid of as many of his cards as possible. So he has less synergy later on. And especially since he doesn't have any Axemen, which are being procced right now, this makes it all the more worth it for me to keep going. Also, another thing, now that he's played three weather cards, if he has any weather cards left in his hand, uh, which a lot of them usually do, uh, but then again, he played both of his silver, I don't know, uh, then that, that's a dead card in their hand. And if I can force them to play it, like they're play that card first on like a round two or something, uh, or round three rather, then it, I can just play around it pretty easily. So he's played a spy here. I think without an Axeman on the field, I, I'm pretty sure I can just um, avoid that. He might have been able to play his leader card. You know, he probably could have played his leader card and still took that, but I guess he finds the leader ability will be uh, what wins him the game in like round three or something. But I, th I, I think you really need to take that round one, but we'll see. All right. So obviously uh, a lot of people would just open pass here, right? Or if you weren't, <laughs> if this wasn't Axeman, you would hunt, you almost 100% pass here, right? You want to, you want your deck to go as long as possible. And you're just kind of like, eh, I don't care. I'll just get that one card out of them. And then force them to go first and third, <laughs> first in the third round. And it's all good. But I'm playing against Axeman. And even though my deck likes to go long as well, it doesn't like to go long as much as Axeman. So I'm going to play this out. I'm going to the big things I'm looking for are I'm looking for weather. I'm looking for Axemen and I'm looking for most importantly, by far most importantly, that leader card. I need to get rid of that leader card if I want to win round three. And also keep in mind, like I mentioned in a previous video, I have these 13 strength uh, pirate captains, which I can just slam down in the third round if I only have a card or two left. And that would be greatly benefit me because his cards aren't going to have that much value. Again, even though the pirate captains don't ha find a lot of use or they don't encourage a lot of synergy, they can still be really helpful in situations like this. Which is why I think this deck has like a deceptively steep learning curve because of things like that. As opposed to something like Axemen or Queen's Guard, which are relatively more straightforward. Even though they have they still have a lot of nuance. I'm not saying they're easy or anything. Okay, I'm still going. I'm trying to... I went for a lackluster revive just so I can keep this round going more. And here it is. He's hovering over his leader ability and as soon as he plays his leader ability, I'm out. Whew. That was... 13 plus 7. That was a 20 strength swing. Oh yeah, that's right. I can't... I, I think really long about wanting to try and uh, play my pirate captain to see if maybe I can get one more card out of him. 
because whatever card I draw is probably going to be whatever card is left in his hand or something like that. Uh, but I'm, I think I decide that, you know what, this, the strength difference is too big and I just want to save the pirate captain for the next round. Or did I play it? I actually don't remember. I played this yesterday. I'm pretty sure I passed. I would pass here. Because the whole thing is I'm thinking I know this. Uh, my broadsword is going to buff all the way back up. And it might be enough to force him to play more than uh, necessary. But not to go ahead and pass. Oh yeah, and then I, 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 but I forgot to account for the leader ability, axeman ability. Which could have been really bad if I did play uh, Pirate Captain. I even forgot about it now. It's kind of deceptive. I feel like there should be like a turn counter on them. So you can uh, tell. So this is the best possible situation for me. Outside of having like Sigrifa to revive. Um, uh, whatever that 18 strength silver guy is. But having 26 points in hand. Versus an Axeman deck in the round 3. Is really really good. Even if he plays a Gold Weather. Also Gold Weather completely ineffective right now. Or near, not nearly ineffective. It's only going to get six damage or six uh, strength swing out of it. Six strength advantage rather, or eight, six or eight. And he played his axiom on the wrong row for some reason. It wouldn't have mattered, but I'm pretty sure he just resigned the match by this point. There you go. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. Oh, actually, wait, <laughs> it might have mattered. Eh, I'm not going to do the whole math. Basically, the, the idea is that in, in round one, I played, I willingly played into three weathers across all my rows uh, and playing like almost like my win conditions just so I could uh, extend the rounds as long as possible or extend round one as long as possible. So that rounds two and three are very short and rounds two and three. I am much better at him. I'm much better. I have a much better round two and three than he does, uh, especially with pirate captains. But in general, you generally want to try and force them to play as long as possible. And especially since he didn't have any axemen and especially because they run uh, like double gold weathers or not double gold weathers, but they run they run a lot of weather. And as you can see in this third round, if if uh, if this turn had gone on one more, I would have lost because drought would have hit me. Oh, you know what? He was trying to get the Axeman to proc twice on uh, the range row. That's why he did that. Although I don't think it really matters that much. Very small difference. But anyway, playing against Axeman. This, this strategy also, uh, I've been noticing I've been playing a lot against a lot of Weather Aerodin lately. Uh, this this strategy also fair, works fairly well against them. You try and bait out as much of their Weather in rounds 1 and 2 as possible. You definitely want to win round 1. And then you win... And then you push round two as much as possible to get the weather out because they have something like one, two, three, four, four, at least four weathers, four frosts. And also a lot of the cards are built around the synergy around that. Uh, maybe I'll be able to get a, a, a game up today about or tomorrow about playing around uh, Aridin because it's kind of difficult. And but it's like it's simple, but deceptively so. <laughs> so that's it. Extend out the rounds, bait out their uh, powerful cards, make sure they have as they don't get as much synergy as they would like. Even if you suffer from it, uh, suffer from it as well, you're suffering less. Thanks for watching.